Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your most often visited site on the internet, that's right, thelandgeek.com. And with me, as always, the incomparable Joran Frazier from... Man, this is going to be hard. Do I have to list all the domains, Joran? Um, yeah, and you know what? You don't have to because it may take the entire show. Let's, so. just, let's, just, let's just list the most important of them. Joran Frazier from landhub.com, reserveland.com. That's it. That's it. Those are the two most important. That's the two most important. I mean, we have finally. Well, we're we're not quite there, but by the time this podcast comes to air, which will take a day or two, um, we will officially be launched with Landhub as the new domain name. I'm very excited. So, Duran, you know, I know you don't like to tout your own or toot your own horn, brag, boast, but you're a big deal. Now you're right. Which which, uh, which magazine are you writing for now? Forbes. Forbes. So let's talk about the article. I'm totally joking. I wish it was Forbes, dude. That's which, hilarious that you didn't believe me. Which one is it? <laughs> it's uh, 4L Magazine. It's the San Diego, the San Diego Men's um, Business Lifestyle Magazine. So the Forbes of San Diego, 4L Magazine. So Jeremy was just telling me about this article, and uh, I love it. I love the idea about how Duran comes up with ideas and how he – jots down his ideas because it's so unique and so clever and yet potentially so lucrative and it gets you from uh idea you know the the point of idea just a little bit further down that line to taking action so without stealing his thunder Duran, what's the 99 cent idea well it's uh it's a little something that I've been doing for many years now. Um, and, and you know, basically I'll, I'll read the first paragraph to you guys. So you get an idea as to what it is. Wait, you're going to really, you're going to read to us like we're kindergartners. Well, oh, can you summarize it? I, I could the cliff but, notes version. I have ADD. Okay. So many people, when they have ideas, they like to write them down or they like to record them. I'm not that kind of guy, which you guys may already know. I'm the kind of guy that does things that aren't normal because I'm not normal. So what I like to do is I like to domain my thoughts. And what domain my thoughts mean is means is that I, I like to go to godaddy.com and I like to take an idea and see if it's, if it's available in 19 different ways of cutting it up, the word and putting words together. If I can get a domain name and I can go out and get a coupon code and I can go get that domain name for 99 cents for the first year. Generally, it's anywhere from 99 cents to 299. I've never had a problem getting it, paying paying more more money. Um, but, but there's. But why do you do this? Why not just write down? Because the idea? it allow it allows me to get to the next level. If I if I think I mean 99 cents isn't a ton of money to spend for an idea, but if 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 I could have a hundred ideas, and one percent of my ideas could stick, or two two percent, um, I only spend a hundred dollars. So I'm not wasting more than $98 on my ideas. So I every year I come up, well, I mean, not every year, every day I come up with ideas, but 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 every couple of days I'll actually go out and buy a domain name. Like every year I've probably got in in and out of my, in and out of my um, domain name, um, what's the word? I guess my, my stash, I have, a, I have about, about 200 domain names of which about 100 come and go because I'll, I'll let go of a lot of domain names, but um, so that's kind of the way I operate is I, is I will go, I will take an idea, I'll be somewhere and instead of, going, I'll go straight to my GoDaddy app, I'll find the domain name that I want. And I have literally found so many domain names on the go. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll, and I'll, you know, once a week or once every other week, I'll look at my domain names and I'll kind of see like what is viable, what's not viable. And it just, it, it, it kind of inspires me to keep going and keep, keep, you know, looking at different domain names and then finding the ones that stick because I know a lot of them won't stick. Um, cause you can't execute on every idea. So, but there are well, certain well, ones well, that, like, give me, give me an example as it relates to like land investing. Um, gosh, I have to go look at my domain names, Mark. I don't know. Um, 
How about free Freeland Report? That was that was on the go. Freeland um, Report, I love it. So I was I was in the car driving one day, and uh, and I and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? There's there's uh you know what is it what is it free freecreditreport.com. Um, there's a bunch of free reports. I'm thinking free credit report. What about Freeland Report? And I went on GoDaddy. And this is like a, I, I I don't think it was more than a year ago, and I picked the domain up. It was and it was available. So people 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 sometimes think that they're not available, but you'll find a lot of domain names that that are that are so obvious. Now the short ones you're not going to find like like Landhub that kind of stuff. Of course, I've got to go out and find the guy that owns it and buy it. But in this case, I'm actually I'm actually thinking of ideas that aren't necessarily ones that people are always thinking about. You know, like back in the day with with uh, with land like Reserve Land in 07, I think I bought Reserve Land or 06. Reserve Land Reserve Land was available. I was shocked. So. Um, I mean, if you think about it, reserve land, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand because reserve, like there's a reserve, like people have auctions and, you know, reserve on auctions and it just, it kind of went really well together and I uh, was shocked it was available. So um, I've, and I've always used that term reserve to brand a lot of the things that I do, which is pretty funny. Right. Right. I love it. So I love that's, it. you know, and the article that the article I, in this, in, in, in this magazine coming out next month uh, or this month talks about um, me sitting in a restaurant. Uh, about a, nine months ago, and on Yelp, this restaurant had terrible reviews, and I wondered why wouldn't they go back and fix their reviews? And so I went to GoDaddy, and I bought the domain name FixReviews.com, which it's actually probably a pretty good domain name. I could probably go and market that domain name and sell it for five hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or more. Uh, but it was just an idea I had for a minute, and and it kind of went away, and it's not something I can spend my time on. But I actually like that idea a lot. No, I think it's great. I think it's great. So now you don't do any keyword research. You just go on and you like the domain, like free land report. You didn't, you didn't look, okay, how many people search for the term free land report? Yeah, not, not, not so much. I mean, I, I, I do know that there's the, the keyword string of free land is searched heavily. Okay. So I, so that, that was kind of a, you know, that was kind of key. And I, in my mind, I sort of have my own little algorithm of how I how I look and track. Like if I'm looking at a specific domain name, because I know that certain keyword strings together, like free land or land report, those those strings together are really good. And having a free land report is a, a good one, although it's a little more broad. It still can target those specific keywords that are in the domain. Um, but as we sort of move away from the keyword keyword rich content that 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 is provided the platform for a lot of people to go out and get domain names and specifically rank based on keywords. Um, we've now moved toward a, a, you know, the content side of it where Google doesn't care really what you're, what you're like, the, the values have dropped dramatically um, for these long keyword strings because a lot of times Google doesn't, doesn't really allow their spiders to track, you know, the, the exact, they're, they're looking for unique content. They're looking for, for a website that's really, uh, you know, building content that people are looking at and reading. So it's it's not it's not as valuable as it used to be. Let's say a year or two years ago. Right, right. That's interesting. It's interesting. So, I mean, you just like driving in the car then, and you're like, oh, I'm thinking of uh, this. Like, I mean, literally, like, do you carry a laptop around and you do it on your phone? I mean, how do you uh, how do you typically do it? Yeah, I've got an app on my phone. I've got a, just a GoDaddy app on my phone that I use. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't say my brain is that creative where I'm just driving down the road unless it's like something while I'm driving and I see a sign and, and, and the sign, you know, like maybe, maybe it's a broken sign. I'm like, you know what? I could probably figure out a way to fix that sign and right. then maybe make another hundred thousand of those. You know, I'm, I mean, that's just, that's how my brain works. So I'm like looking at things and I'll be like, why, why is it broken? How can I fix it kind of thing? But, um, so that's, that's kind of how it is. I'm always, my, my brain is always focused on solving problems maybe maybe that's the way to look at it right right which is great which is great yep so you know i think the domain names and your 99 cent idea is important because it really is focused on two main elements right number one is i have an idea and number two is it makes you take action Go just to just the process of thinking, hey, this is a good idea. Freelandreport.com is a good idea. But the fact that you go on and even invest 99 cents, I think is important because it really what the difference is typically in life between people who are successful and people who aren't successful is the people that are successful take action. 
They're constantly taking action. So whether or not freelandreport.com succeeds or fails, you really don't care, do you? Correct. And it, and that's why it's, if I've got 100 domain names, it cost me 100 bucks. If 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 I had one idea that I, I would invest in something that I liked and it was $100, I would pay for it. So to have 100 ideas, it, you know, it's even better. And and going back to it, it there's like like Freeland Report. I actually kept that for, for I think, a couple of years. Maybe I bought it bought it in 2000, beginning of 2012. Um, so I didn't do anything with that for probably 14 months, right. but I had, but I had it. I knew at some point I would use it. So there are certain things and I'll, and I'll go back to another idea again, just to touch on, on, on how it works. But I had an idea of a, of an app for a, a basketball game. I went to a Lakers game about a, I want to say about a year and a half ago and I'm sitting there and I'm going, you know, why, why don't they create some sort of app that you walk into a stadium and you can, and it's, and it's got a geolocation on it, and you can you can only check in the app if you're inside the stadium, and if you're in the stadium, you basically you put in your section number for your for your for your seats, and you can communicate with people throughout that that um, that gymnasium um, or stadium, and you can connect. So if it's like Lakers playing Celtics, you check in as a Laker fan. You can basically like it's like a micro Twitter concept where you would talk back and forth to each other. Um, and I thought, why wouldn't they create? But what the idea was for me was you give that data back to the Lakers and back to the Celtics so they know who their fans are and they know what their fans like. And then you can push notifications and you can say, hey, section 203, you have 10% off beers or whatever, wine or hot dogs uh, during the third quarter. So you have control of that data. And and of, and that's what, what most of these teams lack is control of the data of their fans. So sure, they have an email address, but they don't know what they're, what they're, what they're, um, fans like they don't know where they they like to sit they don't know what kind of money they make if they're sitting on court side front row they don't right. you know what i mean like there's there's so much data in that and so anyways again my brain can go on and well, you know but- well you know you know not to interrupt but you know what's interesting about that is i was just talking about this with uh jeff victoria on our platinum mastermind today because i think it's so important to get inside the head of your customer yeah and that's exactly what you're talking about so you know after you make a land sale, right? That's not the end of it. That that person is indicative of the of other people that you want to sell to. Because okay, what is it about that person? Why do they buy this land from me? You really want to know that information. If you skip that part and you're just like, "Yay, I made a sale. This is great. What a great business." You're missing out on this huge opportunity. Because number one, they might buy more property from you. Number two, they probably have friends with similar interests and similar goals and similar worldviews that are also going to buy the same type of property, right? Yeah. And number three, even if they're like, well, you know, it was just for a lark. I thought the price was great. Well, okay, what do you do for a living? Um, How old are you? Where do you live? Did your parents own property? I mean, there must be a reason like, People just don't wake up one day and buy raw land, right? It's a certain worldview on why we do this. And, correct. Um, correct. I think it's really important that you either have a, you know, I use a, a, a program, surveymonkey.com. You can send out, ask, you know, questions to your customers or just get on the call, on a phone call with them and, and just ask them. They may not be 100% honest, but you'll, you'll soon learn. Okay, this is I'm getting a composite sketch of what my ideal customer looks like. Does that make sense? 100%. 100%. Do, you do, do you do that? Um, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning and I think my my dilemma my dilemma has always been um, and anybody's dilemma is right like there's no, no one's figured out like I was I was I was watching uh, TV today and um, or the or I was reading some news article about Bill Gates and that three of their top 20 investors in Microsoft want Bill Gates out. Oh yeah, I, just, I was reading that same article. And I thought to myself, you know what? Here's a guy who's a legend, right? I mean, you know, him and Steve Jobs created two of these massive companies. But Bill Gates, I don't know if Bill Gates was ever the creative mind, right? Like he wasn't the, he wasn't the guy that really solved the retention problem of his clients. He just created something that was very, very useful, but never learned how to grab people and keep them. Um, look at Apple and Steve Jobs. He's so creative and he learned how to do everything. And then he learned how to evolve the company. Where I look at these two and I go, Microsoft's a great product, but but he's created something amazing, but he's never learned how to sort of evolve. And the same thing goes for our business. It's like as a land seller, like 
no one's no one's found the perfect way to do it, right? There's a couple of guys out there that are are learning and that have right. done a lot better than we have at, at doing it, but I still think we're the best. Um, but as we learn, we 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 have to we have to also be able to change and evolve and and go to other directions because not everything's going to work. Yeah. So that's you've got, of, yeah you've got to be flexible, even if it's working today. Yeah. Don't get don't become married to it. You still need to be flexible and innovative, and constantly what. I like to say, you know, uh, that great Wayne Gretzky qu uh, quote is, uh, you know, always, uh, you know, don't don't skate to where the puck is, skate to where the puck is going to be. And that's the same thing in the land business or any business for that matter. Yeah. Right. You want to be you want to be looking far ahead and be where the puck's going to be in the future. Correct. And uh, you know, I mean, a good example of that is eBay, right? Was it that was the hot platform when we first started, and now it's not. But there's not there's not one. So that's kind of why one of my ideas was to actually go in there and and solve a portion of that problem, right? Right. Problem well, yeah. Being, well, yeah, well, Land Hub does solve that problem. Yeah, it do, it does to an extent. But the idea is to also create, and that's one of our phases, is to create an actual auction platform. So I'd like to have a system in place um, similar to see for me. It, it, you're, it's all about eyeballs and, and what See, eBay... I, yeah, but I disagree with that idea. With the auction platform? Yeah, because how many how many successful auction platforms are there? Really yeah. successful. There's one. Yeah. Right? They, they've got it. They've got a monopoly on it. And it's just that that industry, that platform is so entrenched now and so difficult to compete with. That. But I have, to, but I have to think of something new, Mark. Like I have to create something that's so. Yeah, so... But, you, yeah but you're solving a different problem because right. the, the big problem is I don't want to list all my property. I, I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the time to go to each platform: Landwatch, Land Central, Lands of America, yeah, Land etc. dot com, and and put the same piece of property up seven times. Yeah, Land Hub solves that problem. Yeah. yeah, it's got it's a better mousetrap. So I don't I don't see why you're diluting your focus. I'm not. I'm options. not. It, it was a, it was an idea that at some point down the line I'd like to look into. I'm not saying I'd do it, but but uh, my focus is obviously on the software itself of helping people market and syndicate their land um, and not have to go to 18 different platforms. Um, you know, one a one one click XML feed through an API to make everybody's life simpler. Um, Could you have said but, something more geek here, by the way? Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. I, I'm not a geek at all, which is funny. In fact, I was, <laughs> I was surfing this morning, and and uh, I I was on a board that was so small, and I go, dude, I'm I'm 36 years old. I'm I think I'm 22 years old. And then I when I went in, I'm like, and I still, but in my mind, I think I still surf like I'm 22 or 23, but I don't. So it's yeah, just, yeah. By sweet. the way, I, I want you to you know I'm playing the smallest violin on earth for you. Thank you, I appreciate You're that. You're 36 years old. You live on the beach. You surf on an idle Wednesday. Yes. It's Wednesday. Yes. Everybody else is at work, in a job, in a cubicle, That's dealing true. with a boss. That's true. Your boss is a big wave. Yes, you, my you, boss. You poor, poor man yep. having to deal with that small surfboard. I'm so bummed. And, yeah. you know, it's funny. Yeah. So so touching back on something else, you know, I, I learned that as we sort of become more progressive in our approach to land selling, um, I also, and marketing, um, you'll you'll always run across people that kind of kind of hit you in the knees and try to make you step back because they don't they they don't want competition and so I had this happen last week. Wait, wait, yeah, give me an example. What do you mean? So so last week I I had a had a conference call with a guy, and I kind of kind of brought him my ideas and and again you know for those for those listening to this podcast. I'm not. I'm not a normal guy. I'm always sort of an outside the box thinker, trying to be creative and 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 think forward. And this guy was like, I, I he he was a guy that I've known um, that's been in the land business for a while. And I had pitched him, and he's kind of in the software side. And I kind of pitched him idea, and he basically from the get go was just shutting me down. Is, boom, oh, boom, I, boom. yeah. Is this is this AD? I'm not going to say his name. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. And just got shot down like three times, and. Uh, so it, it was really interesting to me because because I I thought to myself well here here's a guy that I sort of know and he knows that I've been fairly successful in what I've done over the years but yet he he doesn't even have the bandwidth to think with me and talk and I, he was busy at the time and he had some stuff going on but at the same time I'm thinking to myself dude 
I'm I, I, I in, a, in a nutshell, I just broke it down to you and you told me it's not a smart idea. And I'm thinking to myself, you're hilarious. You know, like for a moment, I was a little bit bummed that then I took it back and go, you know what? It's just, just going to make me want it that much more. Right? right. So as we become more progressive and as we do things out of the box, I have I have friends that think I well, most of my friends think I'm a nutcase, um, but they love me because of that, um, because I'll go and we'll chat hours about really cool, innovative, creative ideas. But they'll be like, dude, how does your brain think that way how do you focus and i and i try to explain to them i do focus i just focus creatively right right yeah so. you know you know it's interesting because you know when i first got started if i if i when i told my wife hey i'm, I'm gonna buy land at and we had no money by the way i mean it was like my last three thousand dollars in savings and i mean we're saving it for car repairs and i'm like yeah i'm, I'm gonna go buy land and she's like no you're not i said no 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 don't worry i'm gonna buy land so I think it's I think it's almost a knee jerk reaction, is that people are risk averse, number one. Or if it's a new idea, if it's something that they didn't necessarily think of, well, if you go out and you're successful with it, what does that say about them, right? Yeah. I mean, yep. if you go out and, and, and make this happen, what does that say about AD? Yeah. But if he can poke a hole in it and say, "Oh, it's terrible, don't do it," well. Okay, then, then you 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 will never have that opportunity to kind of you know rise above where you're at. Yeah. So, and that's what I love about your ninety nine cent domain idea is like you're constantly throwing things against the wall and see what sticks. And I yeah. really think that that's really a key, a key uh, money magnet to success. And if you want to attract success, you've got to be the kind of person that's throwing stuff against the wall, don't you think? No, I, I agree 100%. And, that, and, and it really is at the end. And we're not like, again, we've talked to this before, like the, the people that listen to this, I, we're, we're not here just to, to, to teach you how to sell land. We're here to teach you how to, to, to live a life um, where, where you're not being controlled by money, but you're controlling your money, if that makes sense. So right. you're out there and you're making decisions for yourself. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not just a land salesman. I do a lot of different things, but, but I like helping people get out of the grind and step out and take risks and make things happen. Um, I actually have a little, uh, yeah, yeah, but how are you, how are you able to do that? Because so many people I talk to are so afraid of taking that first step. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and I ha and it's yeah. funny because I think our next podcast we talk about it, but I have another article that it, that's, that's coming out as well. That talks about five, five simple steps for entrepreneurs. Um, and basically it, it talks about mitigating risks and what you can do and, and, and creating, you know, one of the things I talk about in this, in the other article was that you, your network is probably the most important thing you have. And it's a way for you to actually tra as an entrepreneur to, to, to look at ideas that you could make work, right? Like, um, I've got a friend who owns, um, a courier company and I've got, um, another friend who just told me that he has a horrible courier service. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my friend who says his courier service is terrible. I'm going to take it to my other friend who's got a courier service and I'm going to introduce me to each other. Okay. Right. So I just became a salesman. So what do I do? I create an affiliate relationship and I, I, I'm, I'm, it's a win-win for the guy who needs a new courier service to win for the guy who needs business. And I'm the guy in the middle putting it together. So I deserve a cut of the commission. Right? Sure. So I create these affiliate relationships and eventually you learn what you're really good at. And you may find out you're really bad at certain things and good at certain other things, but but what you do is you take these ideas and these networks that you already have in place to mitigate the risk of having to go start an idea that you have no clue about. Right. So so I think that's a really good way to mitigate your risk is being out being out there talking to people that you already know that trust you and that would 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 be open to ideas like that, which I think that most people have. As long as you're a trustworthy person, you're not trying to scam anybody. Um, people would trust that if you brought someone together, they pay you commission for it. You know, sure. You're, I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, ultimately, it's all, everything's always comes down to value. Yeah. What value are you bringing to that transaction? Yep. Yeah. So. Absolutely. You, your your mic is giving me some feedback there. It's like crackling. I'm sorry. I apologize. That. All right. When when are you going to spend some real money on a mic, Duran? Um, probably when I make my next exit, which is next week. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, you want to talk about that? No, I'm just teasing Come you. Come on, man. You're I'm just telling me. You. I'm teasing you, buddy. I got nothing going on. All right. Um, so anyway, I, uh, is that better now? I still crackling. No, no, it's good. It's good. Okay. So, uh, we only got a few minutes left. So, you know, I'm going to put you on the spot. I love and it. Don't, don't throw it back at me. 
Okay. Because today I'm prepared. Um, what is your tip of the week? My tip of the week, actually, um, there's there's a couple of tips I have. One is, obviously, we already talked about GoDaddy.com. That's not really a tip because most people know what GoDaddy.com does. Right. But my tip is, is to always be searching um, for discount codes or coupon codes when you when you are looking for go to buy a domain name because they'll charge you. I mean, you if you go on there and just type in GoDaddy.com, generally they're going to charge you, I think, somewhere in the range of of uh, twelve to fifteen bucks. Yeah, so I just, you, don't you just Google GoDaddy coupon code? Yeah, well, but but you want to kind of be a little more specific. Like you you put ninety nine cent domain domain oh. GoDaddy. So so be more specific. That way you'll get you'll get the sites that actually offer the 99 cent domains because some of them don't offer that. Like if you go to retail me not.com, they won't, they won't generally won't have any. And that's actually maybe a good tip too. retail me. I think it's called retail me not.com. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah. Great. Yeah. This is a great tip. So, so you, you type in Google 99 cent domain. Yep. No, not 99, just 99, 99 cent domain, not 99 cent domain coupon code. Well, either, either, either one. Okay. And, and you'll find some other sites out there as well. There's one in one.com. Um, that is also a domain, uh, you know, uh, domain supplier that you can you can purchase domains from. So there's a couple other sites out there that I would recommend. Um, uh, I think there's Namecheap.com. So so you if you pop in, those are all good. There's I wouldn't I wouldn't I mean GoDaddy has a great platform and a great system. Um, I read a funny article yesterday actually or a couple days ago about a, about a woman who was bashing GoDaddy because the CEO killed elephant an elephant in Africa. Well, well you know he Bob Parsons lives here. Yeah. And my literally my best friend out here. Uh, works for him. Yeah, and but here's what, but not, not for GoDaddy, just for Mr. Parsons. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, his so uh, I, investment group. So going going back to it, I was laughing because she was she was like, "I'm not supporting him. He killed an elephant." I thought to myself, "Well, if she, if she knew what she was talking about, which is in in Africa, they actually have to kill a lot of the elephants off because they destroy a lot of property. So right. they have to kill. They have a certain amount of elephants they have to kill. Now, if you're a hunter and killing an elephant, I had a buddy who went out there did the same thing." Because he owned, my buddy owned a, um, a, what do you call it, a, a game reserve. And the game reserve had to kill, I think, let's say like 40 elephants a year. Right. Um, and so my buddy went out there and he killed one of the elephants. So it, it's wrong, but if they're going to be killed by somebody, why is it wrong? So I just thought her whole, her whole mindset was, I'm not supporting Go Daddy because he killed an elephant. I thought to myself, you're so silly because that is one of the best platforms I've ever been on before. And they just, they continue to revamp it. It's a, it's a great, great pl- product. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, uh, that's that's where I, I buy my, yeah. And you know what? Buy your domains on GoDaddy, but don't have GoDaddy host your site. I don't think they're the best hosting solution. I've had I've had issues with their hosting. Who's your bet? What, what's your? I, what's I your use I use day? Hostgator. Okay, and I'll give a little tip while while you're while you're thinking about your tip of the day. Um, I use um, and as you as you get into learning about servers and understanding, you know, when because you, you there's there's different ways you can host your site. You can go to a place like HostGator, which real simple, you're, you're hosting on their server. I actually have my own server, and it's a, called a VPS, which is a virtual private server. And you can get those at, um, I think it's Bluehost. Um, I think HostGator has them now. Um, but I go to I go to wiredtree.com, and they're out of Chicago. Okay. Um, and they have, they're really good. The service is great. Support is great. And you can, for about 50 bucks a month, you can get, a, you can get your own virtual private server where you can store 10,000 domains on if you wanted to. And That's website. awesome. That's awesome. All right. So my tip of the week is going to be, okay, you just bought a piece of property, pennies on the dollar, utilizing my systems in the investor's toolkit, right? Now you got to go out and you got to market that property. Who's the most logical first person to market to? The neighbors. The neighbors. So how do you find the neighbors? Well, you can go to this website. It is listsource.com. And go and and you can you know depending on the on the county obviously, but nine times out of ten this site is going to help you find the neighbors. You get their name, their address, shoot them on a letter, say I just bought this property. Would you be interested in buying it? Because if you don't buy it, you're not going to know who I'm going to sell it to. And I think it's like thirty or forty percent of the time the neighbors are interested in buying that property. So that's a great tip. And if you want to, you know, learn more tips, tricks, techniques, go to www.thelanegeek.com, download for free, 
the Passive Income Blueprint. Subscribe on YouTube for the Coffee Talk, youtube.com slash thelandgeek. Buy some wholesale land, frontierpropertiesusa.com. Give Duran some love, reserveland.com. And of course, you got to go to landhub.com. And Duran, are you, can you sign up now? Or no? you're, you're live, right? No, not yet. Um, you're not live? I, well, well, by the time this thing hits the air, we'll be live. So right. uh, we're just making some uh, changes as we do the um, uh, as we do some of the uh, work to the site to uh, get it ready um, and prep it for uh, being converted over to LandHub. So, um, right. but yes, it should be live by the time this thing makes air. So. All right. Well, leave us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about in the coming weeks and months. And uh, this is Mark Podolsky with Duran Frazier saying, make it an extraordinary week. And thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.